I'm going to need a lot of obsidian for this gold farm. So I threw together a temporary lava farm. Yes, I know this has 32 slots, but it's still temporary. We can use this for whatever permanent structure someone draws and builds. Hopefully much larger. This is a little tiny. And I've got my little obsidian creation station. And set up a haste tube bacon to make it a little bit quicker. And now I can pick up more lava. I didn't forget about these towers. You forgot about these towers. If you're not in the nether, the key to remember about large gold farms is that the zombie pigmen only form on two sides of, or certain sides of the portals. They either do on the uh, south side or the, or the uh, east side. So I'm going to climb to the top here and start laying it out. So you want to do either positive uh, Z or positive X is what side that they're going to spawn on. Which means that's the side they'll fall off of into our collector and killer. Mwahaha. -ha. And we'll be building the portals 23 by 23, so it's going to go quite a ways up in the air. So let's mark this as our center, which is going to be a gap. And then a portal that we want to skip four. One, two, three, four. Blop. One, two, three, four, blop. And then I decide to build, I'm only actually do four. This is just the backside to remind me of where our igniters go. Because they want to be in the opposite side that they spawn on. That's why this is important. So one, two, three, then we're going to do four. Two, three, four, final blop. Now the 23 by 23 includes the corners. Bullets not include the corners, uh... I don't care about saving materials at this point. I just think the roundness might help with the build I'm putting around this, quite frankly, ugly farm. Oh, I see you. Got him. So I'm going to go ahead and get the portals in, and we'll see how huge and obnoxious this is going to be. Okay, we've got a little fur of our portals in place. And our first uh, mechanism, let's call it, contraption, doohickey, <laughs> is mostly done. It's hard to get in here to see the details. There's another observer there. So when this is farm is turned on, get out of my way. Thank you. The sticky pistol will push that observer up. It'll be a clock, which will trigger this dispenser. There'll be a water bucket in there. It is empty now um, to turn on and off, to turn this portal on and off. And in this space, and I'll do this later, we'll put lava in there, which will set these, uh, what are these things called? It'll just set things on fire and light the portal. Uh, Trapdoors. Uh, the thing to remember, though, or to note, is don't put in the water bucket till your lava's already in place, because the lava will start triggering this, and it'll go crazy, you'll wonder what's happening. So lava first, then water. We'll do, you'll, I'll do it in a minute. Just hold tight. And then this piston is here to make sure it's turned off because sometimes the water will, uh, when you turn off the farm, the water will be either out or in. And if it's in, this will keep it from lighting again. Because when I want a farm off, I want it off. Not just some, not half, but all the way done. Where was I? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to put in the, uh, the next three of these here. And then we'll, uh, I don't know, probably put in a tray to collect all the wee beasties and then run the redstone around it so we can trigger it off of one signal. Okay, I've got all four mechanisms in place. It should be correct. I haven't tested these here, but I'm sure it's fine. We'll put the lava here above the drop down observer. Hmm? Okay, good. Yep. Not pouring lava anywhere. It's been like three days since I've built one of these and actually tested it fully on a test world. And so now I'm like, did I do it right? Is it right? Yeah, sometimes your dispenser sets on fire. That's fine. It doesn't burn up. And that's what lights your portal. And now that we've got the lava in place, we fill up four buckets and put them in our dispensers. One, two, 
three, four. Now all we need to do is build a collection tray, wire these up, and we're done. Our collection tray needs to be as wide as the interior of this. Emily needs to be from here to one past this one. And it has to be low enough to clear all these blocks. And then some, because our wiring is actually going to be, let's see. Our wiring is actually gonna be at this height. So we need it like, because of the water and the bouncing, I like to do at least give them three blocks of clearance. So it'll be three down from here. So let's finish this wiring. Basically the idea is we want to make sure not to block the parts where they're dropping in. And so that's equal to that, which means if we run everything at this level, it should be fine. And we'll have it kind of meet in the middle because we can run everything off of one switch. Why? Like I just jumped out, started being on fire, stood there for a minute, went back in. Got the tray in place because this is just the right width to be 17 across. Technically I only need 16, but that's okay. I just extended it one this way. I'll just have a line of water along this back wall and that back wall. It'll shove everything down to this middle section. And then that dirt I'll remove and that'll be the drop chute. There's eight blocks here and just two above there. So I just put one block, uh, one water source there. It goes whoosh down and drops them to their doom. And I'll be wrapping up from the outside because look how ugly it is. <laughs> Suppose that one bucket trick still works. Oh, not if you accidentally kill your fish. Oh no, I'm being swept away. Uh, oh, I'm safe. Oh no, I'm being swept away again. This is quicker if, you know, you're a mob without Frostwalker. <laughs> this is the level that they'll land on. That piece of deeply down there is the spot they'll land on. The next fun part is that little piece of glazed terracotta up there is marks where the signal will go through to turn all the farms on. So I'm gonna drop that down, but I also wanna drop it across and then back down so we don't have to climb all the way up there to turn it on and off. I need to make sure it's close enough so wherever we stand, they'll still spawn in here. Now let me get rid of all this junk that's just gonna be in the way, blocking things, and I totally forgot about. Using Foxy No-Tail's add-on, I can see I need to go up about four blocks for the AFK spot. Do you know how many accidental squid farms I make in Minecraft? It feels like 50% of the farms I make accidentally produce squid. <laughs> Just, it's like I can't help myself. <laughs> All right, well, no one's gonna say no to extra black ink, whatever. <laughs> Item collection is in, at least the start of it. This will give me plenty of room in case I want to uh, sort it in the future. I don't want to right now. Now we need to throw the switch up there, bring it down here to an AFK spot around there. So the redstone will be simple here. I'll just redstone block on top of a stack of slime blocks, which I'll just push up with a sticky piston. When it comes up to here, that'll turn all these on, pushing these observers up and flipping that switch so that the uh, off switches uh, disengage those pistons. And basically the plan is to drop that first section down here, then shoot another length of slime blocks or the redstone block on the end down there, and then a final one all the way to the bottom. So it'll just be like, click, doop, 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 on. Good thing we have a slime farm now. See, easy to understand. Flip the lever, it puts this up, which turns that piston on, which turns that piston on, which turns the entire farm on, in theory. Also, does anyone know what this cape is about? Did I get that from the mob vote? It just keeps showing up. Let's give it a shot. Nothing on my sleeve. I see it's working perfectly. Oh, I see the problem. I can't count the 13. I need a bit of an interstitial in there. Okay, remember, you can't have these longer than 12. <laughs> And this is why I need to wrap the farm. 
Ooh, free copper. <laughs> and more ink. Okay, let's try it this time. There we go. Looking good. Except for the fact that there's water pouring into this. So he gently floated to the bottom. <laughs> I need a button. So you see the problem is <laughs> I should turn this off. <laughs> They're all going to gently float to the bottom and kill the world with lag. <laughs> oh, tell me they didn't create water sources. I don't think it did. Well, you're down, you're down there. I should be able to fly far away to despawn them all. And come back and try this again. <laughs> And the drop's not long enough. <laughs> Once again, not a huge issue. Let me just make sure my water's not forming weird sources. No, it's fine. Some of them are dying, they're not all dying, so I'm gonna drop it down a couple blocks, it'll be fine. Yay, another source of rotten flesh. Okay, that should kill them all. Working gold farm, check. And rotten flesh and ink sack. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> Every time with the ink sacks. All right, now that it's working, the next step is to decorate it. This is not sped up. And some of these fun guys like to try to jump up like that. So I'll just build the wall, finish the wall here.
Oops. <laughs> uh, that didn't go as planned. Not to worry. I patched a hole. It's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> Just a little fun in the rain. Also, I finished my build. Yay. It is the Spawn Town Water Tower. Ooh, it's a squat fat light bulb. <laughs> Not on purpose, but it works out. Had to add a spot of land over here. When you build on the edge of the island, you got to add more island. We've had to do this, like, let's see, this time, that time, uh, that one, that one, that. We need to stop build. We need to stop building on the edge of this island because we just keep making the island bigger. But our snow farm is nestled safely underneath it. And all we do to use it, oh, I also added a, a sorting system for all the important things. Gold, a second gold, uh, which as you can see is already filling up because bedrock. Uh, hopper speeds are weird. Um, this is for ink sacks. We'll hardly get any of those. I don't know why I put that in there. And uh, rotten flesh with a burninator at the end for all the extra, mostly rotten flesh. <laughs> There's just a dropper clock. Dropper shoots straight into a uh, cauldron of lava. Works great. Oh, I also put a floor up here just to make sure if I didn't light well enough inside, which I'm pretty sure I did, but it didn't necessarily, uh, nothing will drop on you and kill you while you're just trying to AFK here. So let's let that build up. You can see Juggerite, been AFK at the iron farm way too long. Although it did help because it needed extra wool. So here's the inside. Ah, I don't know why that startled me. I knew they were going to come down. And I put this floor right here at the level where it won't be interfering with any slime blocks. And when this thing gets going, it gets going. So I like to stand here. And just watch them pour in. I've already got more than a stack of gold blocks out of here. I had it running for most of the time I was building a decoration, but not all the time. Because the breaking of the portal sounds like glass breaking, and it's really annoying when you're trying to like concentrate on building giant circles. But that's okay. Look at a pour in. That was a piggyback one. I went AFK last night, and uh, my uh, screen went dark, so my game got kicked out. And I came back on. The leg was tremendous. <laughs> so make sure you turn it off, everyone, on the realm on the server. All right, so in addition to that, I also, woo, hey, yo, hey, just flew into a tree. We've got uh, Cage Creations uh, Bamboo Farm. We've got Joe Nathan's Sugarcane Farm. And we've got Chrysalis Awakens, woo, Slime Farm, which I uh, put in the Bubble Vader into, it's not really, the, there's no, it's not a Bubble Vader. It's just an item elevator. <laughs> there's no bubbles. Standard, it's what I've got, uh, on the mall for the loaders. The dropper is shooting into a column of solid blocks she already built. And so they just pop to the top. And after that was just a string of hoppers to get both sides in. And then we bubble to the top. Whee! <sighs> Too long. And <laughs> all the items come up here and just get collected in these chests. And Juggerite uh, is working on a wheat farm. Um, as far as I know, he's still in planning stages, as in he doesn't know where to build it yet. <laughs> but it will be coming soon. So there we have it, the official Spawn Town Water Tower slash Gold Farm. I also have no idea what's going on down here. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. Please check out the rest of Forever Bedrockers. Join in next time where we will be building a... Dripstone farm. I'll talk to everyone later. Dripstone. Easy but boring. <laughs>